This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. As Cyberpunk 2077's DLC, The Phantom Liberty's release date is just around the corner. But will this be a redemption story or another flop? Today, we're going to talk about it. Let's get to it. The first thing we need to talk about is they know they messed up. CD Projekt Red knows they messed up and in a bad way. And I think they genuinely want to try to redeem themselves in the eyes of their fans. And I say this because of a recent stream from their quest director, Pal Sasko, had this to say about them not being nominated for Game of the Year. Alpha wrote, in my opinion, Cyberpunk is a masterpiece. The only thing I regret is that the game wasn't received positively due to issues at a premiere, and as a result, it wasn't considered for the Game of the Year awards. And then, unfortunately, Sharami uh, didn't win the Best Actress award, but she should have because her performance as V is so good. Well, Alpha, I mean, you know, in a way, in a way, it was a, um, it was a punishment we deserved. You know what I mean, Alpha? It wasn't included in all of the game, game of the year discussions because we just deserved that punishment. You know, so I don't want to sugarcoat it. You know what I mean, my friend? It's always like this, you know, we just, you just put so many years of your work into something and then, you know, at the end, it may not it may, it may not turn out the way you hoped, you know? So it's pretty obvious from just the tone in his voice, they realize that rushing the game like they did to please investors, as well as putting it on last gen consoles was a total mistake. And I think they have spent the last few years doing everything they can to make up for that mistake leading up to the release of Phantom Liberty. Phantom Liberty will be the first and final DLC that is made for for Cyberpunk 2077. After the release of the DLC, Cyberpunk will basically go into maintenance mode, and a majority of the staff will get moved from Cyberpunk onto other games. Which I have to be honest is kind of sad because if this is a comeback story for Cyberpunk and the DLC does create more sales for the base game and they do a ton in sales for the DLC, it's really sad that we won't get any future content for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, we are getting future content for the IP itself, just not for this specific game. And that is because they are moving from developing games on the Red Engine to developing games on Unreal Engine 5. But this does lead me to wonder that if the game is a comeback story, if it will be kept alive by modders for the years to come, similar to Skyrim. Skyrim is still going strong, and that is purely due to dedicated modders. Cyberpunk does have official mod support, however, most people People don't mess with the official mod support, I guess because it lacks a bit more control than what they would like, and they do mod the game using custom modding systems. So the game is currently heavily moddable, and there are a ton of mods for it out there. But is the content that is being talked about going to be enough to bring people back as well as bring in new players? Let's talk about some of the content that is getting added when this DLC drops. Now, not all of this content is going to be DLC. DLC specific, a lot of the new stuff and reworked systems are coming to the base game as well. First of which is the rework to the police system. They gave the police system a massive overhaul. It is going to be what you would expect from any other game's police system. There's going to be different tiers, and as you do more and more things that trigger the police, you'll go from just a couple people showing up to check out the situation, to a bunch more police showing up, to max tech showing up. You can even have police car changes cases, they've really flushed out the police system. So they say, we'll have to see how it all plays out once we get our hands on it and if it's actually what they say it is going to be. They have also completely reworked the cyberware and armor systems. So armor no longer comes from your clothing and will come from the cyberware that you have installed. Which leads me to wonder what will happen to the transmog system. Does this leave the transmog system useless or will clothing still provide some type of benefit of 
other than just looks. I find it strange that it would be rendered useless considered they took the time to make it a thing in previous patches. So it could end up being a situation where armor doesn't come from clothing, but resistances come from clothing, and the transmog system will still have a use. So not only are we getting a rework to cyberware in that aspect, but we are also getting new cyberware and a cyber psychosis system. For those of you who are unaware, the cyber psychosis system will bring the game closer to its pen and paper counterpart. Cyber psychosis was not something that was made up just for the Edge Runner series, but it is actually something that exists in the pen and paper RPG. Something else that I find kind of strange that has been mentioned in a bunch of articles as well as videos that is getting added or they say is getting added is an air dash. We currently already have the ability to air dash in the game already due to a cyberware. Not many people get this or use it because it's currently kind of useless. So part of me wonders if they are moving that from cyberware to just a continuous ability or if that will get moved to somewhere in the skill tree. But I find it kind of funny that this has been talked about and boasted as it's something new and fancy when it pretty much already exists in the current version of the game. Other things that are getting added are the ability to deflect bullets. They have completely revamped the skill tree and we are getting a new relic skill tree, which we'll talk about here in a minute. We're also getting what are kind of like mini missions that are drop locations. So around the world, things will show up on your map. An icon will show up on your map that will alert you to there is like a drop cache there that you can go to and loot rewards from. However, it won't be as easy as just running up and opening a chest as there will be random gangs that spawn around the area of this loot drop and you will have to fight them in order to get to it. This kind of sounds really similar to a mechanic that can be found inside of The Division. That specific mechanic shows up an icon on the map. You get there, there's smoke coming from the actual crates themselves. You have to defend the crates for a period of time. After you defend them, then you can loot the crate for some type of reward. And the system that they've put in place here in Cyberpunk sounds very, very similar to that system. It's a good system. I think it'll be a welcome system. It'll be fun. It'll be something fun to do from your normal side missions. They've also done a difficulty overhaul. We have a direct quote from Sasco that says, if the player chooses the easy level, the gameplay is really simple. On the other hand, the very hard level is a really big challenge. And in many articles, they have stated that there hasn't been a system of the game that hasn't been reworked, overhauled, or touched in some way. However, there is one thing that is touted that sounds like it's coming to the base game that I don't think it is, and that is the relic skill tree. So the skill tree as a whole is getting a complete revamp, but we are also getting a new skill tree that is specifically designed to have superpower abilities that relate to the relic. There is a quote from an interview, and I'm going to play that for you now. So I hear there's a new relic system that does power up some of your gear. Yes. So early on, um, when you meet Songbird, as seen in the trailer, um, she's a very powerful net runner. And she's able to sort of uh, um, work through your relic to allow you to empower some of your cyberware, as well as find exploits in other people's cyberware. So we offer some new ways to play the game. And you can see in that quote, he states that we need to talk to Songbird in order to unlock that relic skill tree. Songbird is a new character that is specifically introduced with the DLC. So unless they add Songbird to the base game, then you won't be able to access the relic skill tree unless you buy the DLC. They've also stated in a few interviews they're not 100% sure what all is going to be locked behind the DLC exactly and how much of specific things are going to be released to the base game. So for example, we know that we are getting the ability to shoot outside of our cars while we're driving. We're also getting new cars that have rocket launchers and machine guns and all of that stuff on them as well. So it could be a situation where the new cars end up in the base game as well as the ability to shoot outside of your car or use a katana while you're on a bike, which is also another thing you're going to be able to do. Or part of that could be locked behind the DLC. We could get the ability to shoot outside cars in the base game, but all of the new cool cars that have the rocket launchers on them and the machine guns built into them could be locked behind the DLC. And I really feel like how they decide to do this could make or break this as a comeback story. Because if they lock too much behind the DLC, it's going to make 
make a lot of people angry. If they put out too much, not many people are going to want to buy the DLC. They got to strike a really good balance here. But I think they've learned their lesson on overhype and they are not going to talk about a lot of this stuff very much. They're just going to let us find out when the game is released and they're going to talk about it just enough to build a little bit of hype, which is honestly the best way to do it. Too much hype is a bad thing. I want to cover a few other things here that aren't talked about a whole lot. First off, there's a lot of talk about third person mode. We're not going to get a third person mode. They basically can't do that because they would have to rework the entire game in a way that would mean recoding most of the game. So we're not going to get a third person mode. Not going to happen. Dogtown will be added in a seamless way. So it's just going to be added to the map. I think how you access that and how it's open to begin with is what's going to block people off. So you won't even get the option or see it on your map unless you have the DLC and then it'll just be there if you do and it will be a seamless transition. No load screens or anything like that. Just becomes part of the map. It looks like they're going to do Phantom Liberty similar to how they've done the Witcher DLCs. So for the Witcher DLCs, you can start a new game and skip right to whatever DLC you want to play. And it looks like they're going to do a a similar thing here. So the actual DLC itself won't be accessible if you start a new game and you choose to play through normally until you get to the Pacifica District. So that'll take you somewhere between 10 and 12 hours. That's only if you do a fresh start and you choose that option. You will also have the option if you do a fresh start to start a brand new character at level 18 and immediately play the DLC. You should also have the option to take a character who has also beaten the game, go to a specific person in Pacifica and initiate the DLC. And then you'll just be able to play through that storyline. But with all the changes that are coming, I highly suggest just starting fresh. I feel like that's going to be the best experience. I feel like you're really going to miss out on a lot of stuff if you just create an instant 18 level character or you take a high level character over there to the DLC and just rush through it. That is also because there is going to be an option for a new ending. What this new ending looks like, we have no idea. They're very tight-lipped on it. They just stated that there will be a new ending if you play through the DLC. I think they've had plenty of time to listen to a lot of the complaints that were made about the game and understand a lot of what people expected from the game and that they missed the mark on a lot of what they had promised. And they've spent a lot of time over the past years improving the base systems in the game, giving themselves something to build off of. They've also completely abandoned last gen systems in all future updates in order to make the best game possible. And I know it sucks for everyone who may own this game on a previous gen console. You won't be getting the newest update that was released and you won't be getting the DLC, but it's just one of those situations where they messed up. It should have never been released for your consoles in the first place. And they've recognized that and they're trying to make it right now. And I've actually heard word that it was possible at one point, not sure if it still is, but for for all people who had purchased on a previous gen console to get a refund on their game. So that may be something you should look into further if you are really disappointed and you're one of those people. I think Cyberpunk initially was a pretty okay game. For me, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. I didn't run into too many crazy bugs, but then again, I was playing on PC. I really look forward to this next update and I look forward to playing the DLC. If all of these changes are going to be for better or for worse, I'm not sure. I feel like a lot of things probably are still going to feel pretty similar. They stated in a few interviews that the main narrative of the game will not change, but I've seen firsthand before with other games what reworking just a few systems can do for a game and how it can change the overall feeling of a game. So let me know what you all think down there in the comments section. Are you managing your expectations for this? Do you think that this is going to be enough to redeem CD Projekt Red, or do you think that it's going to be another absolute flop? That's going to wrap it up for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more cyberpunk content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.